There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, hello, y'all. Good morning. Okay. We're in here off the early morn today. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are here with me, Goddess Akua Akima, founder of the Afro Dom Academy Network and Magazine. Um, today's video is highly requested once again from the community page, but um, it's actually a part two because I realized that um, some of my new subscribers and stuff here, y'all are asking questions um, or asking for topics that we kind of already discussed, or at least today's topic we already kind of briefly discussed. But um, I'll come around and do a part two because I know the last video that we did discussing this topic specifically, <laughs> um, the last video we did discussing this topic specifically, we did not get to talk too, too much about it. So hello, you guys. Someone in the comments said, nearly broke my ankle running to YouTube. Well, hey, glad you could catch me. Glad you could connect with me. Um, I'm doing a part two of today's topic, a real reason you cannot find subs. So for those of you who already saw part one a few months ago, a few weeks ago, today's going to be a part two, a little bit more in depth since I have a lot more time today to sit and chat with you guys while I'm rolling up. So, um, again, today's topic is focused specifically on why you cannot find for a quick second, hello, welcome. Like I said, my name is Goddess Akua Ahima. I'm recovering from travel sickness, so my voice is kind of in and out right now. It was fine before I joined live, but now it sounds a little raspy, but I am recovering from travel sickness. I'm just coming back from my uh, eight-day vacation, sub-funded eight-day eight day vacation to Jamaica, uh, second annual, and um, got a little traveler's flu coming from the airport. So again, forgive my voice. But like I said, my name is Goddess Akua Ahima. For those of you who are completely new to my channel, new to my life. And over the last several years as a financial dominatrix, I have not only been able to scale myself to six figures, of course, with paid vacations, paid bills, paid rent, but also help over 5,000 at this point, 5,000 Black femme entrepreneurs do exactly the same in their businesses as financial dominatrices. Also using financial domination to finance their um, other businesses to create passive income, financial freedom, and build generational wealth using other people's money through financial domination. So, so um, over the last few years, like I said, I've been able to uh, scale myself up to six figures and surpass six figures as someone who came into this industry at 21 and is now 27 at the time of this video. So my six year experience has been um, quite interesting compared to other doms um, that I've seen come and go in this industry. And over the last few years, of course, in the creation of my network, the Afro Dom Academy magazine and platform, uh, we have been, or I have been for a, a long period of time, single-handedly um, being a support liaison and advocate for other Black femdoms in this community, uh, and as well as BDSM, um, and BDSM at a BDSM advocate and educator as well. So uh, today's information that I'm going to share is based off of my experience, my trial and error of when I was first starting out, why I could not find subs. And then again, based on the research that I've done within my own community as well, um, working with over 5,000 women in this industry alone, in the financial domination industry alone, um, what are some of the trials and errors that I've saw in my students as, why, as to why they could not find subs when they first got started. Um, and then again, in a constructive criticism kind of way, give you the real deal answers, give you the real deal tea that other mentors, other coaches, other programs, whatever, may not be willing to tell you. Um, today, I'm saying this from a place, as I have to do this as a quick disclaimer, I'm saying this from a place of love. I'm saying this from a place of, I've been there. This is the stuff that I was doing that fucked me over. This is the stuff that I saw my students doing that fucked them over. And this is how you're going to overcome this into going into 2024. Okay. Um, so like I said, this is already kind of a part two. Part one is available somewhere on my channel. 
Um, the super chat menu is in the brief description box. Cause y'all know I usually change the description box after I'm off of live. So while you are here for the live, the description box is available with information for super chat tips, as well as that for, um, a profile review. So if you wanted me to go through your specific social media, your specific Twitter, um, comb through it, a <laughs> fine tooth comb from a marketing perspective, from a branding perspective, and from the perspective of your um, coach or mentor, I will be more than happy to do that. Like I said, usually my one-to-ones where I do this with uh, potential clients, potential students um, who are seeking mentoring from me is usually like $55 or more. So right now I'm not going to give you the full hour experience that you would get for $55 or more, but I'll spend a, a little chunk of time in today's live going over your profile, specifically telling you what I like, what I don't like, and things that I think could be a turning point for you to um start attracting the kind of clientele that you're looking for, for $5. So um, other than that, like I said, donations are usually through Super Chats to the Afrodom Network to continue our efforts to provide jobs, um, housing, and career opportunities in and out of the Afrodom Academy in the Baltimore area and surround. So um, for real, to be honest, when it comes down to finding subs, finding your ideal clientele. Let me push this out to Twitter while I'm thinking about this. Um, post this on Twitter. When it comes down to finding subs, finding clients, um, one of the main things, one of the main things that I tell students to focus on and my students specifically to focus on um, is the kind of content that you're posting, first and foremost your social presence, the kind of content that you're posting and how frequently you are posting makes the world of a difference. So you gotta be honest with yourself. Are you someone who's struggling, whether you're new to financial domination or you've been doing it for a few months, a few weeks, a few years, are you struggling with finding clients? And if so, be completely honest with yourself. Are you, do you believe in your mind's eye, because everyone's different, right? Everyone's marketing strategy is going to be different. The marketing strategy that I teach you um, and the way that it works for me may not 100% align with the way you need to use it because you you have other circumstances going on. You may be a student, you may be a mom, this, that, and the this, but there's always a, a million reasons, a million excuses not to do something. But really for a second though, being 100% honest with yourself, if you are a new dom, if you are struggling to find clients, if it's just not working out for you, the first thing I want to ask is that you be completely honest with your fucking self coming into this video. Because if you're not being honest with yourself, then this video is going to be fucking pointless. And I said that to say, being 100% with yourself, not me, because you can lie to me. I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm going to get paid. You don't want struggling with clients. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, be honest with yourself. I'm here to help. Have you been 100% consistent? Are you really showing up on social media the way you need to? Do you even have a social media like Twitter? Not Instagram. Not some shit that I for know for a fact that me as your coach mentor told you not to fucking do. I've never, when it comes to what social media platforms to use to find subs. I've never told someone to, to open up an Instagram. It's always Twitter. Why? Because I know Twitter's sex work friendly or more sex work friendly than Instagram would be. So whereas though, if I was posting a video of me pegging a sub, me at a club with a sub, doing a scene or a session with a sub, me posting it on Instagram, I'm going to get banned the same day. Me posting it on Twitter, I'm a rock with it. I can get followers off of it. I can get sales off of it. So like I said, I always say Twitter. If you do not have a Twitter, you're not putting the work in. If you do have a Twitter, but you only post once a day, once a week, once a month, or you came in through the Afrodom Academy, you made the Twitter page, but since then you've done shit with it. Be 100% honest with yourself. Are you showing up first and foremost? on social media, to market yourself, to promote yourself, to even exist in the online world? Are you showing up on a regular basis to do that? Yes or no? Now, you don't got to say yes or no in the comments. You know, some of y'all might want to, like I said, 
um, you know, be mad at me for a little bit till you realize that I'm right by the end of this video. But that's fine. You can be mad at me for a little bit till you realize that I am fucking right. <laughs> um, you probably not showing up enough. If it was only once a week, that's not good enough. If you made the Twitter profile and you've not even uploaded a picture yet, that's not good enough. And you have to think about it. Financial domination is a rich man's fetish. Financial domination, when it works well, is easy money. But if you yourself are not doing the work that you need to do in order to get the money, then you're doing yourself a disservice. Money's not going to fall in your lap. See, look, not you calling me out. I have to call you out. I have to call any and everybody out because, one, like I said, it's all love. I'm not saying nothing on this fucking video to hurt nobody's feelings, but I knew the information that you need to hear and the method that you need to hear it. So if, it's, if I'm bursting your bubble, not you in the comments, because I know you're fine. But if I'm bursting your bubble when you mad at me, then that's that's exactly where you need to sit in that energy right now, because otherwise you wasn't going to fucking hear it. You want the money or you don't. Okay? So listen to what I have to say. So are you on social media enough? If you have not been on Twitter this week, it's a problem. It's Sunday. If you was not on Twitter all last week, that's a problem. If you've not gone on Night Flirt to turn your listing on to say, yes, I'm taking calls, that's a problem. If you haven't tweeted out anything, not even a few words, not even a, a fuck you pay me on Twitter, that's a problem. Because... How do you expect your audience, the people that are supposed to be the clients, the buyers, your subscribers, your subs, how do you expect them to find you? How do you expect them to build a certain level of trust with you, to approach you, to give you the tributes, to buy the clips, to do the sessions, if you're not presenting it or making it publicly known that you're available for those things? Even the most submissive men, financial domination by definition, for those of you who are completely new, financial domination by definition is the dom sub act of exchanging power through monetary gifts. Even the most submissive beta bitches of men are not going to drop down on their knees and say, oh my God, faceless Twitter profile, someone who claims to be a dom, but don't really post, oh my God, I want you. I'm going to give you all my money. No. They might as well literally flush the money down the fucking toilet. Because if you have not done your side as the professional, as the person who's supposed to be doing this as a business, because it's a business, it's a job, it's not easy money. It's not just looking cute and getting paid to look cute. Anybody could do that. And if anybody could do it, everybody would be doing this shit. The reason why everybody's not doing financial domination is because it's not that easy. It's not that simple. It wasn't just L signs and fuck you, pay me, put, put your money in my hand. It's not that simple. If you're not doing your part as a businesswoman to tell people who you are, what you look like, when you're available, how they can contact you, you're not promoting on social media, it's not going to happen. And I'm going to sit on that point for a long time in this video because y'all need to get it through your heads in the most loving way it's not going to happen if you are sitting on your ass waiting for money to fall out the fucking sky. The reason why for me, six years into the game, I can sit on my ass and money falls out the sky is because I've already done the work. The reason I can sit on my ass and have subs pay me and sales come in and things happen while I'm offline, while I'm smoking a J and I'm minding my business is because I have already put the work in on the forefront. You have to do the work to make it look easy. In order for financial domination to become easy, you have to do the work up front. Up front. 100% up front. Hold on. Lord child. Okay. Sorry, we have a new member just coming into the Afrodom network. So I'm looking at her message. If you're here while you're um on the live, hello, goddess. 
Okay, so she already did the non-discretion and the NDA. Fantastic. All I need to see is hi. We need a copy of your driver's license. Fantastic. And then there's somebody else in here. But I don't know what she don't want herself. So yeah, anyway. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. In order for shit to look easy, you have to do a tremendous amount of work on the back end. Y'all see me now when you're when I'm on Twitter, when I'm on YouTube here with you guys, when I'm um on vacation and I came home and planned my next vacation. I'm in the process of planning my next vacation right now. It's already been paid for by my subs. But y'all see all of that. You see the glitz and the glam. You see the success that I've been able to create for myself. But you don't see the nights where uh, six years ago, five years ago, four years ago, I was working all night on clips. I was at parties and doing sessions and going online for sessions and wasn't getting any hits. All of those times where I was online on Night Flirt and nobody was calling. All of those late nights where I was master planning and business planning, writing out business plans on shit that I wanted to do and shit that I wanted to accomplish in this industry and for this industry um, when nobody believed in me. When um, your favorite Dom was stealing my fucking content and selling it back to you because she was more popular than I was at the time, even though I had existed longer than she has. You, you feel me? All of the struggles that I've gone through to get to the success that I have, to now surpass certain people um, and, and have the, the luxuries that I do. You don't remember when I was struggling and going through all of that shit because you weren't there for it. Or if you were there for it, you weren't paying attention to that side because you didn't know that side, right? There's always the underbelly. And one of the reasons why I'm so transparent with you guys about the work that it takes to grow and be successful in this industry is because you have to know um, how 10 toes you got to be. Like if somebody just positions financial domination to you as, oh, it's easy money. You you build a Twitter profile. You do this, you do that. Look this way, say that thing. And then money's going to happen. If I position it to you like that, like all of the other doms and organizations that I know for a fact are doing so selling fandom classes. Cause I was the first one to start selling mentoring and fandom classes in this method, in this way. So I seen people bite off of my shit. I seen people that I literally reached out to, to say, yeah, let's collab and let me get you inside the Afrodom network so we can do a class together. I seen them take my ideas and say, yeah, I'm gonna collab with you. Then stop talking to me and start a, and try to go do their own shit, try to go do their own classes, try to go do their own thing. I seen it all happen. I got the receipts. I got receipts from 2017 waiting for some shit to pop off so I can pull them out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if I position it to you that way, like other people are doing, when it doesn't happen, you're going to be mad at me. If I tell you that financial domination is easy money, all you got to do is say, fuck you, pay me, make a Twitter and, and, and have a Skype, uh, a Skype so that subs can go, you know, on there with you, send you money through cash app, send you money through PayPal, this, that, and the third. All you got to do is say, fuck you, pay me, call up, uh, call them a bunch of losers. Don't worry about learning the skills of BDSM. Just call them all losers. All men are the same, right? If I tell you that, and then you go out and do that, and then nothing happens, who are you going to be mad at? Me. Because I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't tell you um, how sometimes, yeah, you could do everything that you need to do and market and post. And sometimes you still don't get sales. I didn't tell you that um, all subs are not the same and they don't all want to be called losers. Right. So me giving you information, but not telling you the real side, the underbelly of it is me doing you a disservice. So for me. Again, I have to be transparent with y'all. It's times where it's been years over my six-year journey where I spent months underground doing shit, connecting with doms, connecting with mentors, business planning, studying the game, studying the industry, going months, weeks 
without sales, months, weeks, without tribute. And I still continue to show up. I still continue to push. And this is how I've gotten to the success that I've gotten to today. So you don't just jump from zero followers, no knowledge in the industry to sub funded trips, <laughs> years and back to back sub funded trips, coming home from a sub funded trip, being able to book the next one, going from um, having a beat up car to a brand new car that the sub is paying the car note for, going from out of your mama's house to a fucking sky rise in downtown Baltimore where the sub is paying your $2,000 plus rent. It doesn't just happen overnight. But if I position it to you like it's happened overnight, I'm doing you a disservice. That's happened to me, but within a six years amount of time. And there's times where in between I struggled. I still showed up even though I wasn't making no traction. I still showed up for myself and continued to push and push and push and push and push. Someone said, hey, I love your content. I'm pregnant now, but I was doing financial domination and I feel like I've put it on hold. Well, I mean, things happen. Things definitely do happen. Congratulations to you, of course, um, to your beautiful blessing. Um, if you feel like financial domination has always been for you, then it'll be here whenever you're ready. Because for me, um, through those six years, there were times where I remember back in college when shit was really slow for me, you know, I was already kind of not, I was already part-time in financial domination because I was in college full-time. I was working at Lowe's and I think I was doing federal work study and all this stuff. And I remember being, I was supposed to be like closing up the store. I used to work at outside lawn and garden, um, at Lowe's in Catonsville. And I used to like have to pull the tractors in the fucking lawn mowers, the fucking grills and shit, like just man's work. Um, and I would be looking like this because I've never not looked like this. I've always been bad bitch, always had the long bundles, always had long nails. And they would expect me to do all this laborious ass shit. But I remember this one time I was supposed to be like wrapping up the store, closing up, closing up the store. The store was about to close in like 30 minutes or whatever. And I was like sweeping the floor and my, this bitch ass supervisor kept walking past and make sure that we was doing stuff. And I would just make it look like I was doing something. I was sweeping the floor and I would push it under the aisles. I would push all the trash instead of scooping it up. <laughs> instead of scooping it up and put it in a dumpster, I would sweep all the trash underneath the aisles. So yeah. Um, but I was doing that because I was on kick on my phone back then. I was on kick doing sessions. So I was um, on kick. Doing like little text sessions, video chat sessions with subs back then, um, because that was the most popular app to use at that time. And I remember pushing all of the trash underneath the aisles. And I was just thinking to myself, like, bro, every single time I take a break, I take a break because of midterms. I took a break because my uncle passed away. I took a break because my mental health just wasn't where it's at. I took a break because I got frustrated that I had spent like four months online on Fendom Twitter and I wasn't getting any traction. I wasn't getting any uh, sign, uh, new subs. I wasn't getting clients. I wasn't getting tributes. And I would get frustrated and I would take a break and I would just give up. And I would say, oh, Fendom's dead. It's not for me. I'm not making any money. And I would give up. Every single time that I walked away from financial domination, there was always something that brought me right the fuck back to it. Every fucking time I walk away from financial domination, there's always something that brings me right the fuck back to it. And it's the money. It's the money. It's the freedom. It's the ability to, again, like I said, back then when I was in college, I think I was making like $10, $15 an hour at Lowe's. But I was making a week's, two week's check. What would have been a two week's check at Lowe's, I was making in 10, 15 minutes on the phone. You, you feel me? Like that motivation, whether it came as often as I wanted it to or not, the ability to do that was always my motivation to go right the fuck back, to come right back. Because if I can make two weeks salary in 15 minutes, then there's no need for me to really sit here at this job. My brain is wired like, okay, well, if I could make back then in college, $15 an hour times 80 hours a week, I could do that here and make 80 hours and do 80 hours a week, pushing John Deere tractors, selling lawn mowers. Do I look like I know how to fucking cut grass? No. Do I look like I know how to fucking grill some shit or 
how to fucking sell weed whackers. No, but that's what I was doing. So it's like, I can continue to stay here and do that. Or I can figure out how to master financial domination because clearly the money's here. I just need to figure out how to make it more consistent. I just need to figure out how to make it um, more valuable for myself, more meaningful for myself. So I spent the time and the necessary effort and the money because it damn sure cost me some money to figure out how to learn all of this shit. I didn't just wake up and be become the kinky coach who knows how to market, who has several self-published books on the bestsellers list, who has eight different streams of income. I didn't just pop up that way. I had to learn those things and I had to spend money to learn those things. So I did the work. I spent the money. I hired the coaches. I hired the mentors. I gave up some shit, put $1,500 on my own head, and said, I'm going to learn this shit. I'm going to master this. I'm going to stick and do whatever the fuck I need to do for as long as it takes for me to learn how to master this shit, for me to learn how to replace my job with this shit. So this can replace my job so I can quit this fucking job. Financial domination helped me quit Lowe's. Financial domination helped me quit federal work study. Financial domination helped me leave the federal government. It was at one point in my career when I was in college that I literally had a job lined up with the feds, the, the U United States Department of Defense and financial domination still financially beat out what I could have been making from the federal government level, bro. Federal government salary. I'm talking veterans benefits and I'm not even a veteran. Military benefits and discounts, I ain't even a soldier. Just straight up fed bennies. Financial domination beat that out. Time and time and time and time again. There was another point in time where I gave up financial domination and I started teaching as well. Financial domination surpassed any type of salary that I could have made as a certified teacher. I never had the interest to be certified as a teacher, but I'm a damn good educator. I've been doing it for just about nine fucking years. I'm good as anybody else that's fucking fully certified in Baltimore City or County. You know what I'm saying? But financial domination outweighed that. The benefits, the money, the freedom, the financial freedom that comes with this has outweighed any job, any nine to five that I've ever had. So it's always pulls me back to Fendom every fucking time, every fucking time. And no, I'm not talking about money that I make from mentoring or coaching. I'm talking about money that I make from pure subs pure interactions with subs, pure tributes from subs, pure clip sales, telephone calls. All of that. And for me, I know it's because of all of that work that I've put in. So like I said, the first part, first and foremost, and I'm going to stick on this for the longest, and I feel like I've driven it down to you at this point by now. It's been 28 minutes. One of the reasons why you're not meeting your subs, you're not meeting subs, you, you can't find them, is because literally you are not doing the work. You're not showing up on social media enough. You're not 10 toes on it. You are not well invested into this. You feel me? And, and let's keep it a buck. You probably in the comments on all of my videos talking about how you want to tap in with me, how you want to work with me, but you've never pulled the trigger. Not meaning, oh, I'm trying to take your money. But no, if you are serious about this, replacing a job for you, helping you achieve financial freedom, having this build generational wealth for you, you are not going to be able to do all of that trying to figure it all out on your own. You're just not. I wasn't. You feel me? Like This is coming from someone who's literally been in some of y'all's shoes before. You're not going to figure all of that out, how to scale the six figures, how to do this, how to get the passive income, how to write books and all, all of that shit. I had to pay like multiple people to learn how to do. Abiola Abrams is my mentor. Madam Caramel, Alex Burton. What the fuck is the other girl name? Aliza Dia and so many other people have been my mentors and I've paid them for this information. It only works and is it benefit for you guys now because I've taken the information that they've given me and I've converted it onto how to make it work specifically for financial domination, specifically for femdom, specifically for the sex industry. 
So whereas though my coach, Abiola Abrams, was teaching me how to market as a spiritual entrepreneur, teaching me how to write books as a spiritual entrepreneur, those things still hold value to me in any industry because now I can start any business based on the marketing strategies that she's taught me. I can write a book on any subject based on the book writing strategies that she's taught me. But because I'm a femdom, I took her general advice and made it happen for this specific niche, made it happen for Fendom, made it happen for the sex industry, made it happen for BDSM. So now I'm the expert on book writing specifically for Fendom. I'm the expert on how to, if you are someone who really wants to create passive income for yourself, you should be, I should be your first point of contact for how to self-publish erotica. And use erotica and self-publishing to get on Amazon bestsellers list and not only make sales off of those erotica books, but turn those books into sales funnels for yourself so that you can find six-figure clients. Because now that's a skill that I specifically know how to do, that no one else in this industry knows how to do. There are other doms, there are other coaches, there are other gurus in Fendom who sell books, but do they know how to sell a book, write the book? and teach you how to do it. One of the things that a lot of people do in this industry that I've seen, especially other people um, do when it comes to selling books and stuff like that, most of them are not actually writing it. They're not writing the book. They're buying books that are pre-written. They're buying books that are written by chat GPT. They're buying books that are plagiarized from someone else's work and they're just selling them back to you. Um, there's very seldom people in this industry that I know who are still active in this community who are selling books that they've actually written themselves. Myself and Amberly Rossfield. And Amberly Rossfield has not been in this fucking community in, in damn near years because y'all drove her fucking crazy and y'all was sending her death threats and all this other shit and she fucking left. There are very seldom people who are still in this industry who consider themselves mentors, who are actually credible, who are actually writing the books and the material that they are selling back to you. I am one of them. Emily Rossfield was one of them. Madam Caramel, of course, is one of them as well. And all of the others I've not heard enough about, or they have way too many other allegations of, uh, of bullshit to, to make me believe that any of the rest of their work is, is credible. So it's like, for me, one of the biggest things, and I'm going to move on from this, if you are not active on a regular basis, if you don't have a content calendar, if you're not scheduling time and making it your priority to be active, to engage with your followers, to engage engage with the fellow doms that you follow on Twitter to be present in any shape, way, or form online, you're not going to see the results that you want to see. Even if you have all of the content, even if you have all of the books, even if you're doing all of the sessions, even if you got all the dom outfits and all the shoes and your own private dungeon, none of that matters if you do not have a social presence. None of that matters if you're not showing up consistently for yourself online. Why? I've also mentioned to y'all that when the pandemic hit, I've said it in multiple videos, I've worked with so many people during the pandemic because so many doms, so many sex workers, so many strippers, cam girls, et cetera, who were out there in the real world. When the pandemic hit, the world shut down and nobody could leave the house. They had zero fucking income. And they were literally panicking with zero fucking income because they did not know how to navigate the online world. They did not see the importance of having a Twitter. They did not see the importance of maintaining a social presence. They had one, but they never posted. They were always at the parties. They were always at the clubs. They were always at the events. They were always at the strip club. Y'all know this is not no fucking job. You feel me? This is this is self-employment. This is entrepreneurship. Ain't no unemployment benefits you can get. If the strip club shut down, if the world shut down and, and you at the dungeons, ain't no unemployment benefits that you finna get from the dungeons closing down. That was your only income. You fucked yourself over. 
you have to have an online presence in this day and age. If the world shuts down again, your online presence will be the only thing that's making you money. If the online world shuts down, the real time presence that you have will be the only thing that's making you money. You have to have both. You cannot put on all of your eggs in one fucking basket. Someone else said, my OnlyFans was booming during the pandemic. I'm online only mostly. Exactly. Think about all of the girls who did not see the value of being an OnlyFans girl. Think of all the girls who was at the dungeons and at the strip clubs shitting on OnlyFans girls. Like, oh yeah, y'all online. I'm, I'm getting that real time money. But then the world fucking shut down. And now they're looking at who? The OnlyFans girls. Oh my God, I don't know how to navigate OnlyFans. Can you help me? No. No. Because now business is booming and I'm busy. No. You should have jumped on the wave when we told you to jump on the wave. Right? So it's like, don't put yourself into be in predicaments. You never know how shit is going to go. You never know how shit is going to go. But if you're not making sure that you're setting yourself up for success, you're fucking yourself over. You might not see the value in it now, but let the world shut down again. You're going to see the value in it. Um, you're going to see the value of it then when you're asked the fuck out. So instead of waiting for you to be asked the fuck out, do the fucking work now. When you come to me for mentoring, when you come to me for coaching, when you're sitting in my classes and you 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 claim you don't see the value of doing the night flirt, you claim that, oh, I'm not a social person like that. I would rather be online. I would rather be doing real time. Take heed to what I'm saying. You do not know better than me. It's okay. That's why you're here for my mentoring and coaching because you don't know better than me. So take the advice that I'm giving you and know that it has value and I'm doing it for a specific reason. If I've worked with over 5,000 women and I've seen the mistakes that I've made and also the mistakes of 5,000 other women, what makes me think that you're not going to make some of those same mistakes knowing that you have no context, no idea what you're doing? Thinking that you know better because I told you to make a Twitter and you don't like social media like that. So you're going to disregard what I'm saying. No. Because then a year from now, when you ask out or six months from then, when you're still ass out and still don't have any clients, I'm going to ask you, did you make the Twitter like I told you to? Did you make the night flirt like I told you to? Have you been posting like I told you to? If the answer from you is no, then it's not my fault. It's your fault. Right? So let's move on to the second one. Now, before I move on to the second point, I need to finish rolling this, Jay. Let me know if y'all have any questions or comments um, in the chat. It's eight people in here. Make sure you share, 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 share this video. I know it's super early on a Sunday. <laughs> I know it's super early on a Sunday, but I definitely want to hear from y'all because um, I need to know what's really going on with you guys. Why do you believe you're not seeing the subs that you want to see? Or what's happening in your experience on your side of Twitter um, that you're, what, what are you going through? What's happening? What are you experiencing? Why do you believe you're not mess meeting these subs, meeting the metrics that you want to believe or want to hit? So let me know in the comments while I roll this jack. Questions, what's going on on your side of Fendom Twitter? Do you feel like you're shadow banned? Do you feel like you're not getting enough followers? Why do you feel, as a dom watching this video, why do you feel like you're not finding the subs that you're trying to find? What's going on? Let me know, please. Let me know. I need to roll this real quick. Mm. Mm. And I'm awake. Got me in my teaching voice. I'll wait. Because y'all going to talk to me. I need some questions. I need some feedback. What the hell is going on on your Twitter? That you not meeting these subs. Because they out there. Be honest with yourself. Are you active? Be honest with yourself. Let me the fuck know. Like I said. It's no need to lie to me. You either making the money or you not. I ain't hating on you. I ain't biting on you. I ain't stealing your subs. I'm here to help you. But if you can't be honest with yourself, 
then how the fuck are you going to get that money? Somebody, thank you, being honest. Thank you, goddess. It's because I'm not active. Well, now you know. You got to be real with yourself. Are you not active or are you active? You're not active. So I would say one of your goals for 2024 is to create a calendar, schedule time. Even I understand people got kids, people got jobs. They can't give up good jobs, um, you know. But if you want your th that good job to be replaced by a better job through financial domination, you got to get active, right? You know, so your your I would say your New Year's resolution, my goddess, would be to create a a calendar for you to schedule time to be online. I used to use content calendars when I didn't have time to be online, so I didn't make any excuses. I didn't have time to be online because I was teaching. I was trying to save up money to get out my mama house. And I always found an excuse. You can always find 10 reasons not to do something. But like I said, scared money don't make no money. Excuses are not going to make you the money. So schedule time for yourself to force yourself to be online. Batch content so that even when you're only online that one day, you got three, four things already, already pieces of content already planned out. All you got to do is go post them. So it looked like you still online. You know, it's plenty of things for you to do. No excuses, ladies. Someone else said it's because my Twitter isn't complete and I'm not consistent. Hello, let's talk about it. We're not going to get to 2024 where you're doing better if you're not being real with yourself. Okay, you ain't hiding. You ain't hiding from me because when I go to your Twitter page, some of y'all my students, you ain't got a lot of me. When I go to your Twitter page i see what the fuck read and the fuck is the problem you ain't got a lot of me craig <laughs> my twitter isn't complete and i'm not consistent that means today you need to go on twitter and finish your profile it's not that hard go on canva tap in with me if you need some help i'll help you build your whole fucking bio profile today hashtags all of that header Design your own header profile. And we can go through the whole shit today and be done today. It's no excuse. My first titter was taken at 3K. So you had to start over. You got a few subs and you've drained them after $500. They disappear. You do aftercare. Okay, so I like that you mentioned that you do aftercare because a lot of people feel like financial domination. There is no aftercare to that. And that's why... Thousands and thousands of doms get chargebacks every fucking day. But I am one of the only dominatrices that I literally know in six years who um, has taken a significant amount, six figures out of subs from one-off sessions, recurring subs, returning subs, and have never, literally ladies, never had a chargeback. Never. Never. And it's because I do aftercare. So continue to go. Now, some subs that you meet are not, you know, I did a video this about, about this before. Every sub that you meet is not going to be a long term. Some subs just are for fun and that, you know, that time being, take their money and dip. They're going to come back. They might take some time to, you know, recoup, get their money back up, you know, because you got to think about it. Like, these are people. Just because this man is calling himself financially submissive don't mean his rent not due on the first of the month just like yours. So even the richest niggas got to recoup. They don't spend money just willy-nilly every fucking day. A lot of rich men use astrology um, to determine when they're going to make investments, when they're going to move their money around, things like that. And they damn sure don't move their money around during retrogrades. Um, they also have to take an advantage of the stock market. A lot of rich subs have money, their money and their wealth in the stock market. It's not feasible to just pull their money on a random Tuesday just because they're Dom X for some shit. No, because that's going to fuck some other stuff up in their portfolio. So they move their money smartly. They're people just like us. So even when a sub disappears, my philosophy is that they'll, they'll always come back. If you build a certain relationship with a sub, you have a certain kind of, you can create a certain kind of experience, even if it's a one-off session. If you do your damnedest to make sure that that session is fun, you're asking questions, you're checking in on the sub, y'all having a good time, you're making it a memorable experience, it doesn't matter how long it's been, they'll fucking come back because they're always going to remember you. 
Um, someone else said, I just got verified for our clips. Hello, congratulations. And now you need to create a night flirt for her. Um, she's got a Twitter following and somewhat what of a presence, but you need to be more consistent in making clips. Nice. So once you build up that presence, because you're at a different stage, now you're at the point where you have the social media presence. You want to be a little bit more consistent with it. But now you need to, it sounds like because you have the following, you have an audience, now you need to push them towards those sales funnels. Now you need to be more co um, consistent with creating content so that subs know, okay, well, Twitter is not the only thing that she does. She also has an I want clips. She also has a night flirt where I can call her. And now you're forcing those that audience that you've now created for yourself you're forcing that audience that you've created for yourself to go down those sales funnels. Because it's one thing, you know, it, like I said, it's always one step, one step, one step. You got to put that work in at every fucking step. It's one thing to have the social media following. Bam. Now you got it. You got people's attention. They see that you're a dumb. They see that you got some credibility. They see that you can, you kind of know what you're talking about. They know what you look like. Now you have to start converting those people to sales. How do you do that? Be more consistent on that I want clip side. Be more consistent on that night flirt side. Be more consistent with pushing all of your content towards the paywall. Stop putting all of the, oh, look, I just did a session with my sub and here's some pictures of it. Or here's a 30 second video of me doing something. Stop doing that and pushing them towards, start pushing them towards, I want clips to see the behind the scenes or your only fans for the behind the scenes or call you on night flirt to talk about it. Less freebies, more paywall content because that'll start training your audience to go buy. That'll start training your audience to go buy. Step number one is to get the audience. You get the audience by showing up consistently. Once you show up consistently and you have an audience, now you got to get them to pay. You don't drop one thing off for the next. You still got to do it. So you still got to show up consistently. Still got to get them on the paywall content. Still got to be, you, you know, it's just like one step at a time, baby steps. But that's where you at. And that sounds like a good place to be. So you're 2024. You need to be making content. That content calendar might still be a benefit to you because that's going to help you be more consistent. And um, while you're batching out content. Exactly. Um, someone else said they think they're shadow banned. Um, to be honest, there used to be this website that'll tell you like, oh, if you're shadow banned or not. But I think the, the website used to be cat. Um, one of the things that I usually do to get out of shadow banned is I go through my page and like some of the more controversial things that I've tweeted. So if I tweet something and like, let's say, like I talked about it in my last video, that one tweet that I have that goes viral every year. I think I made the tweet originally in like 2019. And then every year around this time of year, it goes viral again. And I get like a shitload of followers and shitload of this and shitload of interaction and engagement. If I'm shadow banned, I will literally come through my file, like come through my page and retweet all of the most controversial shit that I've ever said on Twitter. The most out of pocket shit that I've ever said they got the most retweets, they got the most likes, they got the random people from Twitter like, oh my God, what the fuck is she talking about? Like, I will go through and intentionally retweet all of those things so that they go viral again and people are engaging with my profile, people are commenting, even if they're saying ridiculous comments and I need to just hide the comment and block the person because they being ignorant and shit. The point is to bring me out of shadow ban with genuine engagement. So I'm doing that by rage marketing and tweeting the most controversial shit that I can fucking think of. And that usually brings me out of shadow ban without fail. <laughs> Y'all think Doja Cat be, be doing all of this Nazi weirdo shit and then dropping an album two months later on like just by accident? No, she's getting rage marketing. She's driving people's attention by doing the wildest. Now, I'm not in agreement with her doing Nazi weirdo shit. Don't get me wrong. But... She's doing the most wildest shit that she can fucking think of to get a bunch of people talking about her, good or bad, and then she drops a fucking album after she already got the attention, people are still talking about her, then she dropped a fire-ass album, and now everybody's talking about the album. It's a similar strategy. So I will go retweet the most controversial shit that I've ever said on my page 
to get a bunch of random motherfuckers, even if it's people who's not a part of the fandom community, talking about my posts. They start talking. I get my ass out of shadow ban, block all of the loser comments, block all of the ignorant comments, and now I'm not shadow banned, and then I go drop a clip. And now my clips are more visible. My profile is more visible. I'm getting more followers. I'm getting more likes. I'm getting more comments. I'm getting more genuine engagement from my specific audience because I've been taken out of shadow ban by this, this controversial ass tweet going viral again, just like it does every year. So um, that's how I would recommend like getting out of shadow ban from a marketing strategy. Um, but yeah, like I'll be telling y'all, I'll be on this shit. <laughs> I'll be on it. it. It's on it. It's on it. But I study celebrities as well. So, like, the reason I know Doja Cat does that is because I'm studying her marketing strategies. When it comes to me and, like, celebrities and shit, I've never been that type of, like, dick rod celebrities and, like, oh, I'm canceling this person because they did this and they said that. I feel like most of the time celebrities do that shit for marketing. They do that shit to pull a reaction out of you. Doja Cat does all of those weird things because it pulls reactions out of people. And either way, good or bad, it gets people talking. Beyonce does the same fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, Nicki Minaj does the same fucking thing. Like, these celebrities do these things to pull these wild-ass reactions out of people, whether it's good or bad, because it gets you fucking talking. Like, Snoop Dogg did it the other day where... um. What did Snoop Dogg say? He said he was quitting smoke. He didn't say, I'm quitting smoking weed. I'm about to quit or stop smoking weed. He said, I'm quitting smoke. Y'all, the internet took that shit and ran with it and was like, oh my God, Snoop Dogg dog said he's, he's going to start smoking weed. He's going to stop smoking weed. I'm about to stop smoking weed, right? Dick riding, dick eating, doing everything this nigga say. And he, all he said was, I'm quitting smoke. Then... A few days later, he drops the full video and it says, I'm quitting smoke and I'm buying this 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 smokeless fire pit. It was a sponsored ad the whole fucking time for a smokeless fire pit. This nigga never said he was quitting smoking weed. He said he quit smoke. And it was an ad the whole fucking time for a fire pit that he got a brand deal for. Boosted the fucking sales all the way up. Why? Because people spent several days prior retweeting Snoop Dogg, talking about Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg this, Snoop Dogg that. He said he quit and smoke. He quit. All this attention that he's now generated because he said some controversial shit on the internet just for it to be a fucking sponsored ad for a fucking fire pit on the back end. Tricking the shit out of y'all on the internet. I'm watching all this shit. Like, I know for a fact Snoop Dogg's not quitting smoking weed. Niggas not dying off of weed. Niggas not overdosing on weed. If he was to give up weed, then that's his own decision. But the way he had said it, I was like, yeah, no, this sounds like a marketing ploy. And it was. So I look at the way celebrities market. I look at the way I market and I mimic some of those things. Um, so that's how I would recommend getting out of shadow ban. Now, I'm not going to say say some when it comes down to like saying controversial shit. Don't say no shit that's literally about to get you fucking canceled. Don't say no shit that's literally going to tarnish your credibility, tarnish your reputation. But yeah, like, <laughs> say some shit that's going to shake the fucking table. Sometimes you got to shake the fucking table in order to get what the fuck you want. So that's how I get out of shadow ban from a marketing perspective. Celebrities do exactly the same thing. So don't think that they don't because they do. But the, the other side of it is celebrities are doing that because they have a marketing team. The difference between me and a celebrity is one, I'm not, you know, clout chasing, so I'm not famous and all this other shit. I'm not, I don't desire to be famous as a financial dominatrix. I desire to be paid. If the fame come, if the money you you feel me comes with fame, if you know, as I continue to grow to to get to the, the scale of financial domination that I truly want to be at as a philanthropist and a millionaire, billionaire. If that comes with notoriety, if that comes with more people know who I am, then so be it. But that's not what I'm after. I'm trying to get paid. I don't give a fuck if if people know who I am or not. Like, I'm not, that's never been the goal. <laughs> what Sweetie say, I just wanted to get my hair and my nails done and pay my car note. Like, I'm not really, 
pressed to be a fucking celebrity. I'm not really pressed to have a certain type of following where people be like, I'm not trying to be Beyonce. I'm not trying to be Doja Cat. Like, I'm not trying to be a femdom celebrity. I want my bills paid. I want to live comfortably. I want to have enough financial freedom to do whatever the fuck I want to do. I don't got to clock in no fucking job and have no fucking white boss telling me what the fuck I'm finna do with my motherfucking eight hours a day. You feel me? For me, the importance of, of what I'm building right now is for me to be able to sit back on a Tuesday and go to the beach, put my feet up in the sand, do whatever the fuck I want to do, knowing that I don't have to go clocking at a job or when I'm ready to start building a family that my kids don't have to do the same. I don't have to instill in my children that in order for them to be successful, they got to go to school, go to college, get a nine to five, work for 50, 60 years, then retire. I want to be able to tell my family, my friends and my, my kids that because of the work that I've done, we have generational wealth and a legacy. So yes, go to school. Yes. You know, do, do good so that you can get a, a good career if that's what you want. But I'm not setting my children up to be workers and employees. I'm setting my children up to be business moguls and 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 spoon fed children and and nepo babies because that's what I believe wealth truly is. I want my grandchildren and my great grandchildren to be profiting off of. Yeah, it might be sex work, but my great grandchildren not going to give a fuck that they don't have to pay to go to college because great great grandmother that's dead is was 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 popping her pussy on OnlyFans and and selling erotica. They're not going to give a fuck about that. They're going to give a fuck about the fact that they can wake up at 16 and jump in a Maserati, jump in a luxury car, and that's their starter car versus a beat up 2000 Nissan with the transmission fluid leaking all through the city like I grew up, right? So for me, it's about having that generational wealth, building that financial freedom for myself. I could give a fuck less about being famous. I could give a fuck less about having a million fucking YouTube subscribers and all of that. That's not what it's about for me. If that's what ha that's what it comes with, then so fucking be it. But that's not my goal. And I don't teach people from that philosophy because you could be the richest motherfucker in the room and nobody knows who you are. If you're trying to come to me for mentoring because you want to be viral, you want to be known as a dumb, I can help you get there. I can show you how to pay for pay for retweets, pay for blog interviews. Like I know that the other doms do who are more popular, who are all on Vice Magazine and New York Times and all these other things because they paid to be there. I can show you how to do that. I can show you who to contact. I can tell you how much it costs that dom to pay for said article. But do you want to be known or do you want to be paid? Because there's people who are in those articles who are known, but I make more money than them on paper, which, which one is more important to you being known on paper or getting paid on paper? Cause the two is different. Very, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, that's just how I carry it. That's just how I carry it. Now, long, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me go back to the comments real quick. Cause y'all know it's real easy for me to get distracted. Hold up. Let me see. Okay, yeah. These Twitter subs ain't it. <laughs> now, I feel like it depends because when I first started off, I was 100% online and all of my traction, all of my money, all of my income came through Twitter subs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a 50-50. Um, a good majority of the subs or the, the men who are calling themselves subs on Twitter, yeah, a good majority of them are full of shit. But you feel me? That's, it's, it's, it's about those bad apples in a bunch type of thing. You can't generalize everybody because I know that I've still made really powerful, genuine connections with some gentlemen through Twitter who were extremely sweet, extremely kind, extremely generous. Um, it never took advantage of me, never made me feel like I was, you know, it, I, not safe to trust them. There's even subs that got my personal phone number 
and I met them on Twitter. So it's like, you got to find those good ones. If you're not showing up enough, if you're not engaging enough, how would you know which ones are good and which ones are not? Because you yourself are not doing the work on your side to show up. Because even the most genuine of subs, even the most um, online only community sluts could still be a great and profitable client for you. But if you're not doing your part and showing up consistently, they don't trust you. Right? So it's like, like I said, even if a man is the most submissive, it's not about your ass. It's not about your titties. It's not about how many, it's not about you being butt ass naked on the timeline, showing your pussy, none of that shit. You could do that shit all day long. If the subs do not trust you, if you have not shown up from a business point of view and built that trust, built that credibility, built that authenticity, so the subs that so subs know you're not a scammer, you're not a man behind, hiding behind AI pictures pretending to be a woman, you're not a pedophile, you're not um, somebody that's going to take their credit card information and literally blackmail them, they don't have that certain level of trust with you. They're never going to fuck with you. It doesn't matter how good you look on the timeline. It doesn't matter that your titties is in the camera. It doesn't matter that you got all the outs, all the lingerie. It, that shit does not matter. Think about it from a business standpoint. If you were on Instagram trying to buy um, candles from some business and that business profile only had, you feel me, two posts. The post is like kind of spamish looking. There's some typos in the captions. But they want they want thirty dollars from you for a candle, or or you send them a message on on Instagram or some completely vanilla shit. You send them a message on Instagram like, "Hey, I was trying to buy a candle from you, but I didn't see you know the link in your bio to your website is down. Um, is there another way I can place an order?" And they start talking rude to you. Uh, uh why are you in my DMs without buying a product from me? Bitch, I just told you your website was down. Right? You would not trust that person. Would you still buy a candle from that business? Fuck no. Financial domination is still the same way. You still have very much so, especially as someone who's new to the industry, doesn't have a social media presence. You know you're a nobody. You know niggas don't know you. You know that profile picture say you just made this account November 2023. So why do you think that subs would just come out the woodworks and, and give you all of these things and do all of this stuff with you. They are looking genuine subs, even when they send in the money, they are looking for genuine connections, genuine relationships. If you have not done your part to show that person, this is who I am. This is why you should trust me. This is why you should reach out to me. This is why we should build that connection. It's never going to happen. Y'all wouldn't even be on my video watching me asking me fucking questions if you did not fucking trust me. If you couldn't go on Google and fact check who the fuck I am. The fact that I wrote these books. The fact that I'm in magazines without paying for them. The fact that I got features without paying for them. The fact that I have the credibility that I have in this industry. Y'all wouldn't even be here asking me questions if you couldn't fact check me and trust me. If you didn't trust me, you wouldn't even be here with me. So the same philosophy goes for you. If your subs don't trust you, if you haven't done your damnedest, who the fuck are you? Why should I give you $1,000 of my money, random stranger? Make it make sense, because it don't. And some people, and I have to say it in this way, reiterating it in this way, because otherwise, y'all don't get the message. You think it's just going to fall out of the fucking sky. And it's not. It's very much so a job. It's very much so something that requires your effort up front and your continued effort to make it profitable. Yes, you could come in and get some random tributes. There's been times where I've, I've started a loyal fans account, an AVN account, went live my first day, no subscribers, no audience, and made money. So yes, it can happen. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it won't happen for you, but if you're looking for consistency, you're looking for financial freedom, you're looking for that money coming in on a regular basis, not just some one-off shit, and then you don't have a fucking sub for three months. 
not just a thousand dollar day and then you can't get another thousand dollar day till the next six, seven months later. You don't know how to replicate what just happened on a consistent basis. You have to put that work in. You got to. And when you have a content calendar that'll help with your consistency so that you can show up online more often because you're scheduling it into your normal everyday plans. My content calendar has everything from my personal life to my business life, what I have to do so that I know Monday I got a doctor's appointment. I got to do X, Y, Z over here. I got to go to the bank and do that. And then when I get off of out of doing all of those things, I'm going to go online and be available on night work. Schedule time to do it. It is of your benefit. It is of your greatest benefit to schedule it, to invest in yourself. Think of all of the work that you guys are putting in. It may suck. Because, yeah, those times where I was working all fucking night and still wasn't getting no fucking traction, that shit fucking sucked. But now... I'm grateful for the fact that I did it because I can sit on the beach in Jamaica and and plan my next vacation. I can sit on YouTube and smoke and talk to y'all because I don't have to do shit today versus two, three, four, five years ago when I needed to be working on a Sunday in the cold. It's cold as shit outside. I used to have to work in the cold. But I'm chilling and mind my, you, you, like it, it, it comes full circle. You're going to thank yourself, but you have to do this and you have to view it as an investment in yourself up front, an investment in your business, an investment in your long term, an investment in your success. If you to do this, you got to do it first. What they say, you got to put a, 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 a thousand, ten thousand hours into your business. If you really want that shit to pop off, y'all know I'm right. Come on now. So it's, what's what's going on? For me, it's not even that I can't find subs. It's just attracting subs that are always trying to lowball me. So if you're only getting subs that are trying to lowball you, I don't know where all these viewers came from, but hey. <laughs> if you're always getting subs that are always trying to lowball you, my first question, do you have a minimum tribute in your bio? If you're always getting subs that are trying to lowball you, please let me, if you're still in this room, I need to know. If you have a minimum tribute, like on your bio, on your Twitter profile somewhere, it's goddess P, your illustrious fantasy, no DMs, minimum tribute, X amount of dollars. Do you have a minimum tribute posted somewhere on your bio and your social media? If so, that's why you always get the subs that lowball you. Real shit. And again, it's from my personal experience. It's from the experience of teaching 5,000 other people in this community. If you have set a minimum, if you have communicated or marketed, let's use it this way. If you've marketed a minimum, because for me, I feel like that's what it does. When you have a minimum in your bio, when you talk about a minimum tribute, you're marketing a minimum that you're willing to do or accept in order for you to interact with subs. And if you have done that, that is why you're attracting subs that lowball you. That is why you're attracting subs that only want to give you $25, but to give me a hundred. Right? If you have a minimum in your bio, because a lot of the subs that we that you may think that you have are community subs. You may have a sub that's also seeing me. Also seeing a couple of my girlfriends, he'd have been around the block. We all, I mean, all of the good ones, at least, you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you have a minimum of $25 in your bio, why are you mad that people only giving you $25? You just told them that they could do the bare minimum. I mean, quite literally, you said, this is the minimum that I'm willing to accept and still engage with you. So why would they pay you beyond that? You've given a man the opportunity to, to, to do the bare minimum. That's like from a dating perspective, if you don't set the tone when you when you first start talking to a nigga that you like flowers, you like being taken out on a date, you like regular communication, you don't set the tone for that and, and you let him take you out to coffee and McDonald's for the first date, he going to take you to McDonald's for the rest of your relationship. Like you, 
you, you feel me? You can't go on McDonald's for the first date and then get mad that he not taking you to Benny Hanna's and that he not flying you out. Y'all got cheeseburgers and Happy Meals on the first date. Why would he take you to Benny Hanna's? Like you did not set the tone for that. So with men, you and it's no no shape of no tea towards you because I don't even know if you actually have a minimum in your bio, but if you do, that's why you're getting lowballed because you're lowballing yourself. The reason that subs are lowballing you is because you lowballed yourself first. Don't have a minimum. Don't talk about a minimum. And one of the things that I it it takes some time for my new doms, especially my students, to understand is when you're actually 10 toes in financial domination and you start off doing the work that I'm describing, you actually don't like you, you get to a point where you don't have to talk about the money with subs anymore. Like, you know how you want them to just send it? You know how you want them to just approach you with the tribute and then speak later? Like, you don't, like, they just do it. When you do all of that work up front, on the other side, they just send the tributes. They don't lowball you. They just pay for the content. They just pay for the clips. They just give it to you. You don't got to ask for it. You don't got to talk about it. You don't got to force it. It just happens. But that's what you want. Y'all want this side, but then you don't want the work side. So you got to do the work to get to that side. Because when you do the work, it's like when you put that work up front about you building your credibility, you building the relationships, this, that, and the third, it's your the subs have no choice but to fall in line. They have no choice but to respect those boundaries. They have no choice but to send the tribute first because first and foremost, based on your sales funnels, the only way they can fucking talk to you is if they swipe the card first. Or first and foremost, because of your credibility and all of the stuff that they they can see, they can fact check you and see that you've done, they respect you so much they wouldn't dare disrespect you by doing otherwise so they send the money first they send the tributes up front it just comes with the territory like you don't have to you don't have to explain it um somebody said something about a reading what type of reading you talking about my page isn't dedicated to tarot readings anymore now i have not done a financial forecast reading in a good little minute because even as a tarot reader, y'all probably do, uh, apparently you, also remember when I was here on uh, YouTube and also Twitter doing financial readings for doms, talking about how to attract clients and subs and stuff like that. Is that what you're referencing for a reading? Mm. Me too. I've come across so many time wasters. So my philosophy with this, how to scope out a time waster, um, first and foremost, it's on you as a dom to respond to a sub's message knowing damn well he has not sent you a tribute first. Point blank period. If you go through that in your inbox and you open that message knowing you have not seen no type of notification on Cash App, no type of notification on Wish Tender, that's on you. The fact that you're responding is on you and wasting your time. But if you choose to respond to prompt him to send, because sometimes um, I've had messages where subs have not sent the tribute first, but their first message to me is, goddess, I'm looking to send you a tribute, but some I don't have cash app in my country. Is there an alternative method? For me, that's a respectful enough method that says this person maybe has the intention to pay, so I'm willing to share one response. And that one response is no conversation, but the link to my alternate method. I do not talk to subs when it comes to DMs and stuff like that. I'm not wasting my own time. I know that they didn't send and it's on me to continue having this conversation with their sub or not, knowing that they have not sent. Now to gauge, to see if someone's going to send, again, my first response is the cash app. If they say something like, oh, I don't have cash out, da, 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 the next message, an alternative method, no other word. If there's not a fucking message after that that says sent, me saying anything else is wasting my own time. 
You've put it out there what the expectation was. You've responded with the payment method. If they do not send, you continuing to talk to them is wasting your own time. Giving out free kink. Right? And when you have a blueprint, which is why I'm so in, on, big on doms investing in themselves to learn the game. When you have a blueprint, when you have coaching, when you have a mentor, you can find ways to have those consultative conversations and screen subs to see if some of the men that you're talking to are worth talking to, to see if they could inevitably play. Because I'm not saying that every single man that sends you a message on Twitter is a time waster, but they will damn sure talk to you as long as you let them without paying. Think about it. It's you. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. They want your attention. They know they have to pay for your attention. But if you keep talking, they're going to keep fucking talking with you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you're wasting your own time. So in order to not do that, I know as a coach and as a mentor, because I do it myself and I'm teaching my other students to do it as well, there are ways to do that on dating apps where you're actually getting paid to do that. I mentioned in the last couple of videos, there's an app that I'm on right now that I'm teaching my students about that's fairly new, where I quite literally sit on here and do nothing but screen subs all day and get paid for it. The pointless back and forth DMs that you're having, I'm getting some little coins for it. You could be doing that. But if you're trying to figure everything out on your own, or if you haven't invested in yourself, you're not being consistent, you're not quite serious, this is some of the reasons why you're not getting the results that you want. This is why you're seeing other people doing it, but it seems like it's impossible for you to do it. Real talk, real tea, constructive criticism, or love when I say this. But again, you might be wasting your own time. Send the cash app. Send the other link. Don't say nothing else. If they keep talking, they've wasted. They're trying to continue a conversation with you. If you respond, you're wasting your own time. Yeah. Killed me. She's right, though. Exactly. Besides mentoring, what else did you invest in? First and foremost, for me, when it comes to like gear, stuff like that, it sounds like it's kind of what you're mentioning. Filming, I don't make any excuses. Most of my stuff is filmed off of my phone. I've had an iPhone 6 when I started. I had the iPhone XR 11 um, and the 13. Professionally, hold up, because now the bitch is stuck. Ah! Professionally, I shoot off of this. But to be honest, I quite honestly cannot think of one thing that I've shot um, video wise on this camera for myself as a dom and I'm a professionally trained photographer as you already know but I shoot off of this D33 um, Nikon 3, D3300 so this is what I have I have a ring light um, ring lights from Amazon um, that's definitely an investment worth it a, a good ring light a good quality ring light um, is worth the investment and most of it the rest of it's going to be your time because for me, it's not about the outfits. It's not about having your own dungeon. Like I have my own dungeon. I'm in my bedroom right now, but y'all know I got my own dungeon in my apartment. Um, and it's like none of those things really matter up front. The biggest investment besides mentoring is time. Because you got to be patient with yourself. No business just blossoms into six figures overnight. Take the time that you need to learn yourself. Take the time that you need to learn who your ideal client is. Take the time to that it that it takes to to build your social media. Take the time that it takes to um, just grow and develop into the professional that you want to become. But the reason why mentoring is important in that investment is because if you don't know how to answer those questions, it's going to take you a lot more time to figure that out. 
So if I asked you right now for the seven of y'all who are in here, because I can see y'all people fluttering in and out, who is your ideal client? Describe that person in 25 words or less right now in the comments. If that's not something that you can do, it's probably going to take you. And I'm just being honest because that's how long it took me before I got serious about financial domination and spent the money to ment for mentoring and spent the time investing. It's probably going to take you the next two years to figure out who your ideal client is without the help from a, someone like me who gets it and who can help you brainstorm through that. If you don't know right now and can tell me in the comments in less than 25 words, who your ideal client is, not that person's name. Like I'm talking, what hobbies do they have? Where do they most frequently travel to? Is that someone with a passport? What kind of job do they have? What kind of relationship do you have with the sub in, in, the, in the eyes of your ideal client? If you can't pinpoint a specific type of person instead of this broad, like any nigga with a wallet, any man with with that work eight hours a day, someone who make more than $30 an hour, unless you can give me some really specific things so that when I'm reading your comment, I see a man in my head, like an image of a specific man in my head. Right now, you don't have all of the information and all of the pieces that you need in your business to see the success that you want to see. And it's not impossible, but without the mentoring and without the investment of yourself and the time that it takes, if you're trying to rush through the process and just take any nigga with $75, right now it's going to take you some time to get to that point. And it's not impossible, but that may take you a year. That may take you two years. And again, you still got life, you know, shit's still going to happen to you. You're still going to get sick. You're still going to, you know, have to go to school or go to work and do all these other things. So because of those, all of the things that, that go with life, that may take you three years. It may take you four years. I know people who've been in this industry 15 years and haven't accomplished what I've already accomplished in six because of the mentoring that I've had, because of the investments that I've made. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, you need to sit with somebody who can show you how to map that out, who can show you how to business plan, show you how to find your ideal client. For me, my ideal client, as an example, is um, a man of action, someone who, regardless of his salary, knows how to be dedicated to a, a mission, dedicated to a purpose, and he has a certain level of passion within himself as a confident and stable man that regardless of whatever his challenges is, is, is put in front of him, he knows how to execute that. All men are not going to fall under, uh, under that category. I've not mentioned hobbies and interests, but again, that's a certain kind of man. And for me, that certain kind of man, someone who's uh, passionate and driven and, and focused, that kind of man for me makes the ideal submissive because they know, um, I know that they're goal oriented. I know that if I say, hey, I'm you know trying to invest into this business endeavor um, that I think would be really meaningful to black women in uh, the community, in the FinDom community, and I want to put together a project to provide housing, to provide jobs, to provide um, financial aid and, and grant small business grant funding to them. Can you support me in this cause? Regardless of their income, they're going to say yes. Regardless of um, um, their age or ethnicity, they're going to be able to execute it. And because I'm looking for a certain man with a certain kind of passion and drive, that kind of man is usually successful enough to have the resources, ka to do it, and the connections to make it happen for me. But for me, that's really easy to describe. Now, 2017, I couldn't tell you to that degree, who my ideal submissive was, it was any motherfucker that got a hundred dollars. 
And there's a difference between any motherfucker that got a hundred dollars and a man who has the time, resource, resources, and assets to make your fucking dreams come true. That's the sub that you want. That's the sub that you want. So, let me catch up. I tell them to go to a paid site. My minimum is 75, but I'm going to take it out. Take it out of your bio. Take it out your bio now. And while we on the topic of Twitter, take any minimum out your bio. Take any minimums out of your tweets. Delete all your tweets that say something about a minimum. Take any verification videos, for the love of God. Y'all got me going back to 2019. Take all of the verification videos on your page off of your page for the love of all things good, holy, and great. <laughs> Please. Please. Not a minimum, but my initial tribute is $30. That is a minimum. You don't see it as a minimum, but that's a minimum. Because to be honest, if I'm a man who has $1,000 in my pocket and I'm willing to give you $1,000, but your initial tribute says $30, I'm not going to give you $1,000. I'm going to give you $30. Anybody would do that. If, if somebody says this iPhone is usually $1,500, but you know somebody that can give it to you for thirty dollars. It's the same iPhone. Of them, the other one thirty. Which one are you gonna buy? The one that's thirty dollars. And it's not about a reflection of you. It's not a reflection of your self worth. It's not a reflection of your value. But they're thinking as a consumer. Men hold what they pay top dollar for to a higher degree. Men respect you and, and, and hold value to you based on how much they are willing to invest their money, their time, their effort, their energy, and their love into. So if a man's not spending money on you, he's not going to be as invested. Think about it from a dating perspective. Y'all know it's, it's men out here that will treat one girl like shit their whole relationship. Never buy the girl flowers. Never take her out on a date. Never do this. Never do that. Leaves that girl and goes and, and wipes up the very next person. Takes the very next person on all types of dates. Always buying the very next girl flowers. Always buying the girl after you this. Buying the girl after you that. Why? Not because now he got the money, he acting different. No. Shorty's holding him to a higher standard. He has to do it. He has to chase. He has to invest in order to keep her. You know what I'm saying? Or you just didn't bring that out of him. So in order to bring that drive out of men, you got to make them pay. Anything as, as far as initial tributes is a minimum. No minimums, no initial. Because my to be honest, you gonna, my initial tribute should be $1,000 or more. My initial tribute should be anything. My initial tribute should be your, the, the deed to your fucking house. My initial tribute should be the moon and the stars. Like, get, if you can bring me the moon and the stars, yo, go ahead and do it as the initial tribute, nigga. Yeah, come hard. Come as hard as you can. Sell your house as your initial tribute and bring me the money for the house. If you can. Otherwise, just give me whatever you got out your check right now. You know, so like, don't, Put it out there that you have that initial. Don't put it out there that you have a minimum. Allow men to approach you from where they think they are. If you allow a man to approach you at that $30, he's going to keep doing it at that 30 But if you allow a man to come to you on his own fruition and be like, God is, I fuck with you. I, I'm loving you. I want to I wanna serve. I want to submit. Here go $1,000. He's showing you how he's coming. He's trying to show you how much he values you. He's trying to show you how much he respects you. So let him approach you with whatever he got. Because you can always tell him after that that you deserve more. And you do deserve more. But don't set the tone for what you want to be approached by. Because I know for newer doms, out of the 5,000 that I've talked to, we've done the surveys. We've done the analytics. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
I'm just giving y'all, I'm just giving the information to y'all in a relatable and digestible way so that you hear what I'm saying. So I'm not speaking statistics to y'all, but it's like, out of all of the students, 5,000 students, a lot of them, when it came to pricing and initial tributes and minimum tributes, felt like, well, I know that I make more than $75 an hour. I know I know that I make more than $100 an hour. Don't look at it that way. You, you got to separate yourself from the matrix when you come over to financial domination because the reality is you will make whatever amount of money and fandom you think you finna make, you will make 10 times more than that. When you let that ideology go, that you got to make a certain amount, that you got to have a certain type of tribute. It's limitless. This is a billion dollar industry, literally a billion dollar industry. They print money every day. It's a construct. Do not price yourself like you work by the hour still. You don't work by the hour no more. This is not a nine to five. This is not a, a job, a punch in and punch out job. The cap, there is no cap. There is no wage cap. There is no wage inequality outside of what you put on yourself. The possibilities are literally, literally limitless as far as what you can make and how much you can make and how frequently you can make it. But if you put restrictions on yourself, like it's got to be a minimum of this, you're going to first and foremost give a man the impression that he can do the bare minimum. And that's all he'll ever do. But again, you're not working by the hour anymore. Don't think about the fact that you only used to make $25 an hour. You only used to make $30 an hour. You only used to make $10 an hour. So now $30 minimum sounds like a good deal. It's not. It's not a good deal. You don't know how much this man has in his pockets. You don't know how much this man has access to. I don't care how poor he looks to you. I don't care how broke he looks to you. You don't know this man. I don't care if he told you he only makes $25 an hour. You don't know what he has in his savings account. I don't care. If he has savings account. He's lying. Because there's been plenty of times where I'm in a drain with a sub and I've already taken a thousand dollars and he's, oh, God, it's, I don't have no more money. God, it's, I don't have no more money. Then five fucking minutes later, he comes up with another 500. Do not listen. Do not listen to what they're saying. Don't. Don't limit yourself. Don't cap yourself. Like, yeah, take that shit out. Take all of it out. Okay, so I shall take the initial out of my bio. Take all that shit out your bio. <laughs> take all that shit out your bio and take it out now, okay? How to be a fandom on Night Flirt. Um, What do you mean how to be a fandom on Night Flirt? Because for me, I'm a fandom right now when I'm talking to y'all. And it's not like a performative thing that you have to do in order to get the money out of people. I feel like the commercialization of financial domination and the way some people carry it on Twitter makes it seem like you have to do certain things or say certain things to be a fandom. Um, most of the success that I have because of in the way that I have it with my clients is because I'm just having normal conversations with them. I'm asking about their childhood. I'm asking about them, their hobbies, their interests. And I'm talking about myself and the, the stuff that I want to do, the business business goals that I want to accomplish, it, um, places I want to travel to. And they pay me for that. That's a genuine relationship, genuine conversation, using you for your money. I'm taking advantage of you. But that's just me, in my eyes, flirting and, and just being fun and talking shit. So there's not something that you specifically need to do to be a fandom on Night Flirt. Do you have a Night Flirt? How active are you on Night Flirt? Do you use Night Flirt on a regular basis? Are you taking advantage of the email marketing strategies that you could use on Night Flirt with the messaging systems that they have so that you can connect with more subs and clients? Um, how consistent are you on there? And then when you are on there with subs, what are you talking about? Are you focused on them beating their dicks and getting a nut? Or are you actually asking questions to get to know them? Because either way, they're getting off on talking to you. So what is your focus when you're talking to subs? Um, and what are you talking about when you get them on the phone? Because if you focus on, like, and, and this is something I had to learn as well. If you focus on, because you think Night Flirt is a phone sex operation website. So you think, like, guys are, you know, 
and that's what they're there for. Most of them are, yes. But if you want to stay in control of the conversation, don't just go straight to pulling the pud on the phone. I mean, I'm not a, a robot. I'm not a, a character, an AI bot. I can't just turn a switch and be beat your dick and do this and, oh, give me your money, pay, pay. I can't just turn that on. That's, it's either I'm in the moment with it or I'm not, but you can talk to me like I'm a fucking person and I'm going to talk to you like you're a person. Why are you calling me? My favorite question for any fucking, when I answer the phone for Night Flirt is, why are you calling me? Who is this? Who are you? Why are you calling me? Where did you find me? And tell me about yourself. Those five questions. Who are you? Why are you calling me? Where did you find me? Tell me about yourself. And what are your interests or hobbies? Those five questions turn my, like a normal call or conversation that would have been like two, three minutes into 30, 45 minutes or more. And like I said, with Eiffel, you're charging by the minute. So 45 minutes times five. <laughs> now Nightflirt still gets their cut, but you know, it's you're extending the conversation. And for me, I feel like making it a little bit more meaningful because one of the reasons why I had the success that I have and I've never had a charge back, I have really good client retention is because I ask those questions. I don't just go surface level and straight into kink and stuff like that. Um, unless I'm just in that mood too, I'm like drunk or something like that or tipsy or whatever, um, or I'm just in that mood. But yeah. It's refreshing to the men who are genuine submissives in this community. It's refreshing because, of course, I've talked to men as well. Um, it's refreshing to have someone who doesn't go straight into that. Someone who actually gives a fuck to ask those kind of questions, according to the men that I talk to, the many men that I talk to. They find it very refreshing that all, although I'm young, um, and a part of the fandom community that has been commercialized, I still carry myself as someone who is legitimately looking for genuine connections with subs and is willing to build those relationships over prioritizing sex and money. My clients are old as fuck, y'all. They're not worried about getting a nut. They're not worried about chasing pictures of my ass and my titties and my feet. They're worried about finding connections with doms because they were a sub for 30 years and their dom died. Their dom got married. Something happened to a long-term relationship that they had with another dom and they're looking to build a new relationship. That's what genuine subs want to do more than anything. They're not trying to get off to content. Like, yeah, that's that's gratuitous to them. It's They'll take it. Any man will take it. But it's gratuitous. A genuine sub is looking for that relationship. And if you approach it with this, get straight into the session, get straight into the kink, get straight into the money, you're going to miss out on really powerful, really meaningful, life-changing relationships with a lot of good guys out here. And ladies, too, for those of you who want film subs or... um trans and non-binary folks. You're going to miss out on a lot of people forgetting to talk to this person like they're a human, forgetting to build that relationship with them. We're just not giving a fuck about building that. Um, a person who's willing to sign a debt contract and actually have a agreement on the weekly tribute, I would prefer a real estate tycoon, investor of some sort. I like that. So you have um, a certain group of people in mind, someone who's a real estate tycoon, so they could talk to you about property management or um, how to do the Airbnb thing and, 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 and rental arbitrage. And so like, that's a lot of stuff for you to talk about with that person. So for you, you would connect with lawyers, you would connect with real estate agents. You need to put yourself in those types of environments online and offline so that you can connect with those people. Because just because somebody's a real estate agent don't mean they ain't got a foot fetish. Or you can't give them one. Oh. <laughs> 
and turn them into one. So like, yeah, the, 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 the more that you have this concrete, like picture of the, your ideal sub, your ideal clients in your head, the better you'll be able to connect with those people because now in your marketing efforts and the way that you show up online, the way that you make your content, the way that you tweet, the way that you speak, you should be speaking as if you're talking to that real estate tycoon, as if you're talking to that investor, as if you're talking to that specific client. You weed all of the time wasters out. You weed all of the people who don't align with that out. And you attract those high level men that like that shit. And that's how you find them. Or at least that's how you find, that's how they find you. By you starting to clear more pictures you have of who your ideal client is. Now all of your client, all of your content should be geared towards talking to that person. Speak on Twitter as if you already have a thousand of those type of people following you what do like like talk like you're talking to them and they'll start talking back you'll be surprised very very surprised especially on night flirt i feel like i find a lot of good clients on night flirt and twitter they either find me on night flirt and then follow me on twitter or they find, find me on twitter and then call me on night flirt mm-hmm a submissive that can be attentive to my needs, genuine and well-traveled. Someone that is willing to invest in me in your goals, loyal with a provider's mindset. I like that. And for me, that energy gives me, you're going to find subs. I hope you're single. If not, then it is what it is. But you're going to find subs that are going to probably be a little bit more romantic towards you. Um, and that's not always in a negative sense, like, oh, you got to be in a relationship. That's, this is going to be your boyfriend. You got to ki like kiss and all of the other stuff, but you're going to have subs with the, that description. You're going to have subs that are a lot more emotionally connected to you. They want to probably travel with you. Um, if they're really attentive to your needs, they're more than likely single themselves and they can dedicate a lot of time to you. Or they want to be a, a live-in sub or a sub that comes to see you on a daily basis or something like that. So you're going to find subs. Um, if that's your ideal, I think that with that, knowing men, knowing the kind of guys that I've talked to and knowing students, my students as well, you're going to probably start leaning towards finding subs that um, view you as their dom girlfriend or view you as someone that they want to take care of almost in a romantic sense from their side, even if it's not romantic from your side. Now, I value those kind of men because even though I'm a dom, I still want to be courted. I still want to be romanced. I mean, I like when men are like that. I like men and my subs who buy me roses and, and send me wine when they're thinking about me. And I like when my subs write me little love letters because they're doing it from a perspective of our dom sub relationship. They know that, you know, I'm someone that is in a committed relationship. So they have a certain barrier. They're not going to cross a certain boundary, but they still show a certain level of affection and love and romance to me that I think is really sweet um, for the relationship that I have with them. Bringing me roses, you know, checking on me when I'm sick, bringing me groceries when I'm sick um, and that kind of sweet stuff that you would um, most people would attribute to someone that they're dating that who would do stuff like that. Let me see. Somebody said, let me go over on the Twitter, take the thing out. <laughs> yeah, take the thing out your bio. The deed to your house for the initial tribute. I love that. I mean, because why not? You know what I'm saying? Like, if we really could put a, a number on the initial tribute, maybe the initial tribute should be a million fucking dollars if you got it. I mean, damn. But if you don't, then I'll just take what you got. <laughs> but I'm always going to want more. So instead of me, again, like I was just saying, like driving back to that point, Instead of me telling you what I want or telling you what's the bare minimum, I'm going to allow you as the man who's the provider, you as the man who's attentive, you as the man who should be the chaser of the divine feminine, I'm going to let you show me how you come in. Because some of them might come with $25 and some might come with, you know, goddess, let me buy you a car. Like, 
Some might come and God is let me fly you out. Like you ne- let him come to you and show you how he's coming. Let him come to you and show you the dedication that he's trying to make to you. Because let him be the man in that aspect. Whether he's dominant or submissive, let him be dominant in that aspect of the way that he approaches you. Because that's a masculine energy trait. That's a masculine energy trait to be the pursuer. Let him be the pursuer and approach you with that level of respect and that, that, that this and that, that. And then you as the feminine are on the other side receiving and you can always tell him, I want more. I want this. I'm not willing to accept that. Be on that side. Do you ever... This thing is in the way. Do you ever have subs to get you weed? I mean, yeah. To like reimburse the trips to the dispensary and stuff like that. But for me, that's more of like a a session type of thing. I don't like. Oh, it's another thing that I see new doms still do that I'm trying to get y'all to phase out of new doms always have the minimums new doms always have the verification videos and new doms always have this menu this like you make it on canva you make it on um some type of photo editor app and you have a menu of of tributes um the menu is like oh $30 $30 for weed, $500 for my car, $2,000 for my rent. Like, you, you have a menu. One of those things that I hate, <laughs> that I've grown to hate and despise so much is that. Um, and I feel like, one, because it, it takes me back to the same point of the, the minimum tribute. Like, you're giving them the opportunity to do the bare minimum. I feel like I'm not a fast food restaurant. I'm not a McDonald's. Um, And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense because I know that the idea of menus in our industry came from escorts, but I don't like that they do it either because we're not a restaurant. We're not McDonald's. We're not Olive Garden. We're not Red Lobster. We're not Benihana's. I shouldn't have to display a menu of my prices or the the services that I offer and how much I'm willing to do for those services. I feel like, especially on Twitter, because there's places where I have a menu myself on like Trius and stuff like that, where that's more of like a, a booking site. But like on Twitter, I don't like the idea of it because it always gives me fast food restaurant vibes and la- allowing some to do the bare minimum vibes. And I don't like that. I feel like when it comes to Twitter and initial tributes and the way that you brand and the way that you market yourself, I think that in order for you to, if, you're, I, if your goal is to be a luxury dom, if your goal is to brand as a luxury, I think that the luxury comes from your audience, your subs, your subscribers watching you live your life. The same way y'all watch influencers, the same way y'all watch, what's that girl named Diera and her husband before her husband was cheating on her? Like the way y'all watch influencers on YouTube and you watch them go shopping and you watch them unbox this and un- like live this lavish lifestyle. All of they post is these lavish lifestyle things. I feel like your branding, your marketing, when you are trying to position yourself as a luxury dominatrix, as someone who's charging a thousand dollars an hour or more for your services, for your e- things to experience with you, right? Rather than constantly talking about your prices, displaying a list of your like prices on a menu or having a minimum in your bio, I feel like your social media should be um, your lifestyle. Subs watching you travel, subs watching you go shopping, you talking about business investments that you want to do, you just being yourself, being sociable, and then in the mix, 
you know, your, your paywall content and the link to that paywall content so that they know you're about your money. Yeah. There's a cost, but I'm not going to tell you what that is right on the timeline. You need to go click the link and buy it or figure out yourself or follow this sales funnel to go get that information about how much it costs to engage with me when you're serious about engaging with me. But timeline wise, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to be personable. I'm going to be funny. I'm going to be sharing memes. I'm going to be sharing my vacation photos. I'm going to be engaging with other doms. I may throw some tweets out that are engaging with you as the sub and saying little flirty fun things um, about, ooh, my boobs look so good in this. Like just me living my life, having fun, being fun, being sexy, being fabulous. But talking about the price, talking about the bookings, besides the the general I'm available for this or I'm traveling to that or it's going to be this much or reimburse that, I feel like that does not have to be discussed on the timeline. And when you do the work from a branding perspective, when you do the work up front, broken record, um, like I said, the money comes on the back end because you don't have to tell them how much the clip costs on your timeline when they can just click the link and figure out. You don't have to talk about what your tribute methods are if they're already just there posted. You don't have to say like, oh, my rent is this amount of dollars because you more than likely already have that on your wish tender. And they would have known that if they just clicked the link because they were serious about giving you that money. So I'm not going to talk about it on my timeline. I'm damn sure not going to make a graphic and present it like, this is my fast food menu, Burger King menu, like list of kinks and fetishes that I'm going to do for you as if I'm catering to you. BK, have it your way. I don't give a fuck about a sub. Like, I don't care what hobbies, what kink, like what kinks that you have. I don't care about what kinks a sub has until I'm having that conversation with them and I'm in the mood to do those things. Otherwise, I could give a fuck less about the fact that you're interested in, in talking about your foot fetish with me right now, because I'm not here for that. If I want to do that, I will. If I'm in the mood to engage with you and, and, and have that kind of play and fun, then I will. But I could give a fuck less about your foot fetish. You're here to serve me. And if I give you the impression that it's any way the other way around, I've done myself a disservice as the dom, as the professional, as the divine feminine that's looking for provider men, look, looking for men who aren't just coming to get off and go, men who aren't just looking to lowball me in a session, men who aren't just looking for um, a 10 minute Skype session and then they're just going to go back to their other dom or they're going to go and mind their business and do something else. I'm never going to hear from them again. Because the ones who were trying to build the relationship, trying to build, you know, a connection, they're going to have those kinks. They're going to have those fetishes, of course, but they themselves are not putting sex and all of that other stuff on the forefront. The same way a man would not put sex on the forefront when he's dating you and he's serious about dating you. All men have sexual desires. All humans have sexual desires. But the ones who are serious about being building a relationship are still going to approach you that way, even if you're a dom. The ones that come straight out the gate and want to go straight to the kink, straight to the sexy parts, they are clearly after one thing. The same way you would be able to tell a man was just after sex if he got your number and was just talking straight sexual. He wasn't trying to take you out on a date. The same way you would get the vibes that he's only trying to get sex is the same way you should get the vibes of, about these wannabe subs and men who are claiming to be subs, but only want to go straight to the kink. They're not talking about no relationship. They're not asking you no questions. They don't give a fuck about what's going on with you for real. You could be their dom for as long as their they they dick is hard, but the minute you're sick, the minute you haven't dom drop, the minute you are offline because there's some shit going on, they're not checking on you like a good sub would. They're not sending you tributes while you're sick and offline. They don't even know that you're sick. They just know you offline, so they went to the next dom. They didn't even bother to check on you. You know, just it's it's stuff like that. Stuff like that that you got to look out and do. You're so right. I appreciate this advice. True, true. 
But as far as subs to get you weed, yes. It is very possible. But like, it just feel like it's a part of the game. Because once you have all of this stuff on the forefront, like it it really doesn't matter. You can get a sub to do anything. You can get them to do anything. When you do all of this stuff on the forefront, you focus on the relationships, you're showing up, all of the stuff that we discussed. When you put all of that up front, you can get a man to do anything. You can get him to buy you weed. You can get him to pay your rent. You can get him to pay the car note. You can get him to buy you a house. You can get him to do whatever. Whatever he can do within his means at that time, he's going to fucking do. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't matter. You can get that motherfucker to buy you a fucking house. Take you to the uh, on a vacation. Give you $10,000 for your business. If he rich enough, he'll love it because he can write $12,000 off on his fucking taxes as a charitable donation to you at the same time. But you can get him to do whatever. You can get him to do whatever. I think one of the biggest reasons, moving on, I guess, to reason number three I think one of the biggest reasons that doms can't really find new doms can't find the sub that they want is because you're looking for the wrong things. You're looking for subs to buy you weed. You're looking for subs to buy you a car. You're looking for like small material things, but you're not seeing it from a big picture. They can get you whatever you want. You have to get them to do that though. It's your job as the professional. It's your job as the dom. It's your job as the divine feminine in any relationship, in any dynamic, to get the man to do what you want him to do, to get him to provide what you want him to provide. But for a lot of us um, in relationships and in financial domination, that Part is hard because you don't know how to get them to do that. But how you get them to do that isn't from your titties. It's not from you being sexy. It's not from you getting them off. It's not from you in a relationship fucking them. It's from getting to know that person, talking to this person, seeing if he matches, even matches what it is that you're looking for. Does he even have the ability or skills to be a provider? And then pulling that innate instinct out of him as a divine feminine, demanding that he's better, demanding that he's he does more, demanding that he serve and please you, because this is their innate nature to do so. Hunters, providers, making them do it. It's psychological, it's mental. For doms and women, it's knowing that you're already in control. From the time a man approaches you, you've already won. You've already asserted a certain level of control and power over this man because you made him approach you. And now the ball is in your court to determine what you want from him. It doesn't matter what he wants to give you. The man will always approach you with one thing in mind. It may turn into other things, but they always approach you with one thing in mind, attraction. Now it's up to you to make sure that you use that to your advantage and you get what you want from him. But you got to be smart. So once you get someone... Like for me, once I see, if you're a sub, you call me on Night Flirt once. This is the first time you call. Night Flirt rings. You have a new customer on the line. All right. I already know which way this is about to go. You reach Goddess of Cool. Who's this? Your name. Why are you calling me? Okay. Who are you? Mm-hmm. And where did you find me? Right. So now, in asking you all of those questions, my goal 
is to get you to say enough about yourself so that I know what kind of man you are to see if you're even worth me continuing this conversation past the next 15 minutes. If we get past the next 15 minutes, I want to know if you travel, have you been to Baltimore before? And I'm gauging you in it. I'm, I'm talking to you about it in like a friendly way, but I'm gauging to see if I say something about the fact that I have a private dungeon in Baltimore, are you going to say something the fact about the fact that you would pull up? Because to me, if we on the telephone, that's all fine and dandy. But if you know for a fact that you do your research and I say I'm a pro dom, this is the first time we talk and I say I'm in Baltimore and you say you in New York and your first instinct is not to be like, oh, that's not that far. I should come see you one day. We not, we not seeing eye to eye. Even if you never do it, even if it takes you three years to do it, the fact that you say something about it or don't will make a big determining factor to me. And then from there, everything else is me planting a seed in your mind subconsciously about who I am and what I want and then learning who you are and and how to take advantage of that in the best ways. Yeah. I feel like this has been one of the best lives. Your advice is literally golden. Oh, thank you. Any more questions, my loves? This tea is so good. But this is a part two. I think the last one we did was like 40 minutes. The last one was like 40 minutes. So yeah. All of this is a part of it. I want to see some of y'all Twitters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially the ones who just took the minimum out of their bio. I'm calling you out because I know you got a Twitter because you said you took the minimum out of your bio. I need you to drop your Twitter because now I want to go see them. Who is this? No, I don't think so. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. I love that for her. I really, really do. I need some Twitters. Girl. If you on the live, what is your name from enrollment? That does not help me. That don't help me. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all talking about somebody's name. Okay, so look, because I did forget to mention that. Oh, my God, child. First and last name, please. <laughs> you remind me of one of my high school students. First and last name, please, ma'am. First, last name, and email. Okay, I don't recognize that. I don't recognize that. But yeah, so while I'm on the subject, thinking about it right here in front of me, I did not mention today on this live, if y'all have not already seen based on my community post, that um, the 12 week program has just started for the spring. So we started a little early. You're welcome. But the 12 week program is now available for the spring. Now, this is no longer the seven day business boot camp. This is a completely different class that we have not offered since 
I think before the pandemic. So this is a new class, a new program. Um, InstaDom 101. So for those of you who are not familiar with our original flagship program, we were recently doing for the fall a seven-day launcher boot camp helping, uh, I think we had about 30 girls, 30 for the fall, I think. Um, and we spent a few weeks going over social media marketing, branding, um, how to start your night flirt profile, building the night flirt profile, and then as an extracurricular for some students who had shown um, advanced determination to the program and profile and were doing good, the opportunity to set up their I Want Clips profile and create a real dungeon or real-time dungeon in their own home. Now, following up with one of my other students, I just talked to her this weekend. Um, since creating her I Want Clips profile um, last month, she just got her first sale this weekend, thanks to our coaching. So um, I'm glad to see that our current students are still making progress from that, from our seven-day boot camp from the fall. But the 12-week program that just opened this weekend, um, that's going to continue into the spring is a completely different program. This is the program that's um, the in-depth analysis of financial domination, uh, how to get started with that BDSM, BDSM safety practices, teaching you guys in real time um, here how to do certain um, scenes and sessions as far as impact play and uh, chastity key holding and things like that. Um, going over brand photography, the brand photo shoot that's included as well. So this is the most in-depth program um, that we have ever offered, but we have not offered this class in a significantly long time. So um, if you have been a student with us on the seven-day boot camp, this is a completely different program. It is 12 weeks. Uh, for those of you who want to do the online-only option that will be available, but uh, there is also the hybrid option for those of you who are um, in the Baltimore surrounding area and have Bible surrounding area. Now, right now, I have not released a schedule uh, for other events outside of Baltimore, for Atlanta, New York, et cetera. Right now, for this 12-week program, we are going to be meeting in our home base city, Baltimore. Um, and this 12 weeks is legitimately 12 weeks. So our start of the program is this week and we will end sometime in uh, late February for Black History Month during our normal anniversary for the Afro Dom Network anyway. So um, that program is available and open. The link for it is still the same process. Y'all can text me for the link if you don't have my number. It's 443-543. 6946. Just text uh, Instadom to that number. Do not call me. I had to say this in the last video as well. Please don't call me. It's Sunday. I'm here talking to you because I want to, but it's very much outside of operation hours. Y'all know that. Come on now. Don't, don't call me. If I say text, just text. I will send you the link, but please don't call me. And that goes for subs as well, because I feel like Sometimes, more than anything, it's subs calling me, thinking I'm going to answer, trying to take the easy way around versus calling me on night flirt. I'm not going to answer. Don't don't call me. Thank you. But yes, text me, Instadom, for that link um, in order to get into the 12-week program. Now, the 12-week program also includes, because it is an in-depth program, the online curriculum, the real-time curriculum, um, for those of you who want to take the real-time curriculum in addition to the online, there is a certificate program or certificate um, education plan that's also in alignment with this 12-week class. And the purpose of the certificate is to give you this uh, sort of verified seal of approval as someone who's becoming um, as a network that's becoming quite large in this industry. I've always have believed that we wanted to carry our academy and our learning community as, as 
college, this kind of university, higher institution, higher education field. And I feel like with the opportunity for this program to offer some sort of certification, so to speak, it gives a stamp of approval for this industry that will not only show for new doms that you've taken the time to invest in yourself, you know um, this business in and out, but you're also a part of a very prestigious and fast growing community that's making moves and things happen in this industry the way we are with the Afrodom Network. So um, it'll be, it, I feel like I want this certification to at some point replace the need for new doms to be doing the minimums and be doing the the verification videos that you feel like you need to do for Twitter to show people that you're legitimate, that you are a pro dom, that you are who you say you are. And because we also have so many students who, because they connect with us, because we vouch for them on social media, because they show up to our events, um, we have so many students who have found clients um, through just being a part of our network. We have students who have found their first thousand dollar days and clip sales and 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 whale subs simply because we've retweeted them on our page or they came out to an event and one of my subs has connected with them um, and vice versa. So in order for us to continue vouching for DOMS in that way, I think this certification track with the InstaDOM program um, since this is our signature course from 2019, so this is our flagship program that gave us the the success that we've had for so many DOMs. Um, adding this certification portion to that course, I think, will be really impactful and meaningful to a lot, um, a lot of DOMs, and really beneficial because, like I said, it just provides that stamp of approval. Um, so that you can show in a more professional sense in this industry that you're an expert. You're an expert in content creation because you've studied professional film and photography, which is why your clip sales are so fucking amazing. Because not only do you know how to sell, but you're making fucking artistic ass fucking creative pieces. Pieces that are to some extent, um, from at least my education experience, from the perspective of someone who's like film festival quality cinema, but just fandom, right? Um, and that's really impactful and really u unique in this industry, especially from someone who would be considered an indie content creator, an independent content creator, having that level of skill, having that level of uh, quality in your work um, definitely will help you go really, really far. So that's why I teach it to you guys as well you know, from the marketing perspectives and strategies that I have so that outside of financial domination, you can connect with these subs, like realtor subs and subs who are lawyers and do all of these things and have all of those powerful connections so that you can use those to your benefit for, um, you know, use those to your benefit for growing outside of this industry, having multiple different businesses and stuff like that. Like I have a hair business where I sell wigs and raw Cambodian hair extensions. I had a jewelry boutique, a candle boutique, a trucking company, like all of these other things that have become different streams of income for myself based off of relationships that started and money that came from subs. Somebody said, yes. Okay. Finally, I got a Twitter. I got a Twitter y'all. See, and this is why I love y'all who are not afraid to to speak up and to say something because I got something for you. I got something for you, girl. Hold up. 